Hi, everyone. Just going to mute everyone. I'm going to actually record this. Oh, it's already recording. Okay, good. Okay, so if anyone has questions as we're going through this, feel free to stop me, but I'm going to go ahead and go full screen here and we're just going to get started. Um, first of all, thank you all for being here. I'm super excited that you're here. I love that you're taking this action and being here. And this is the first step that I took to kind of get my side hustle going. Um, and that is that action of figuring it out, figuring out what kind of next steps are, whether that was a webinar I was reading, couldn't really tell you exactly what it was, or a PDF that I was going through. There's always an action step that we can be taking to make that dream a reality or to make that idea that we have a true vision and turn that into reality. So welcome to Build Your Side Hustle While You're Working From Home. And when I say turning an opportunity into profit, I feel like there's a lot of us who are working from home right now, who aren't always working from home, um, who maybe because of COVID or because of the situations going on right now, we find ourselves with more time working from home. And maybe you still have a super busy schedule, but chances are your commute schedule is not the same. You might not have as much work on your plate. And that idea that you've had in the back of your head is kind of becoming more prevalent to start that side hustle. Maybe you're secretly kicking yourself in the butt for not starting a couple months ago because now would have been the perfect time to be up in full swing. So we're going to get into all of the step-by-step -step process of how to go about kind of taking this idea and turning that into something solid and turning a profit from that. So first, this is just kind of the outline of what's going to happen today. We're going to do a brief introduction. We're going to talk about the different steps of, again, taking our idea and turning that into something real. And we're going to go through the vision, the foundation, the process, and the next steps after that. So I'm really going to get into taking that idea and also how to launch and then kind of run the business. So you're getting a real treat today. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Danielle Marquesi and I coin myself as a brand and business coach. And basically what that means is I first started my business in branding and website design and I fell in love with the branding side of things. And I'm going to get into more about branding a little bit later. So I don't want to touch on that too much right now, but I quickly saw that there were so many people who were kind of struggling with the branding of their, of their company, but more kind of jumpstarting and getting to that next step and really ironing out the details and the strategy and the mindset to taking out the idea to profit. So I, I wanted to get more personal in taking that brand and taking that vision for somebody and helping them elevate that to the next level of a business and a lifestyle that they want. So long story short, I help people uncover their passions and teach them how to take action and turning those visions into reality. This is currently my third year in business and I started exactly like this of just really starting my business as a side hustle. It was um, strictly design work. I did website and branding design, so I was in coaching at first and I really treated it as a side hustle, knowing eventually I did want to take it on full time, but knowing I could only have a certain amount of hours in a day. So I was working before work on my business, after work. It was, I don't even want to say it was a lot of work. It was a lot of time, but it was more of that exciting. I wanted to put the work in. I wanted to put the time in because I wanted this. I wanted this so bad. I wanted to take this vision into reality so bad that I was willing to put the work in. And when we find an idea that's in full alignment with our passions and our purpose, it just becomes easier to wake up a little bit early to stay up a little bit later because we're so excited to learn. We're so excited to execute what it is that we're learning. And my business would not look like what it is today if I didn't just click that start button on myself and decide to take that action. So there's a lot of things that I've learned, obviously, over the last three years. But I think the biggest thing is that if you have the idea and you have that vision and you're taking the action, that's what's going to give you the results. If we're not taking that action, we can always just leave it as an idea. Three years later, it can still be an idea if we don't have that action step. And it doesn't need to be huge action. It could just be, okay, I'm thinking about it and now I'm gonna tell someone about it. Now I'm gonna take a free webinar about it and now I'm gonna execute what I've learned in that webinar. It's all these action points and all of a sudden you're on a roll. We have to be able to be willing to take that action 
and let the idea out of the head. Okay, so first I wanna talk about the idea. And the common thing is when you have an idea or when we're talking about the idea is that you, number one, already have the idea. You have multiple ideas. You have some kind of idea and you have absolutely no idea, but you kind of know you want the side hustle. You're just, you have no idea what it is because maybe there's just so many options. You just know that you want something to be different. You want your life to be different. You want something more creative. You want to find something that's more in alignment and purpose-driven and passion-driven, but you don't know exactly what that is yet. So here are some questions to ask yourself to either solidify your current idea or to come up with your own idea. So ask yourself, what are you passionate about? What are some of your hobbies? What do you really, really enjoy? Have you ever made some kind of transformation in your life? And what I mean by that is, were you really um, stuck in a negative mindset place and you were able to learn personal development and personal growth and really change it around and now you're more spiritual? Have you made a transition in your mindset? Have you made a transition in your health? You went, you lost a lot of weight and you taught yourself or took some courses on health and wellness and macros and all that kind of stuff. Could, is there a teachable skill that you could, that you've learned yourself for the last years or so, or sometime in your lifetime that you can then turn into a business? Do you enjoy the art of teaching? And then you want to also ask yourself, do you want a product or a service-based business? That's, that's going to be huge. I am definitely going to be talking a lot more today about service-based hustles. Doesn't mean that this information can't be applied to a product-based side hustle. You might just have to adjust it. But if you do have specific questions about that, just feel free to catch me afterwards. Um, and then ask yourself, what do people already come to you for? Like, what are your friends and family already coming to you for? Are you the go-to for relationship advice? Are you that go-to for new healthy recipes? Are you that go-to for workout routines? Are you that go-to for organization? Are you that go-to for interior design? You Chances are you already have a skill set that you can optimize and monetize on. So ask yourself these questions. And the next thing that comes when we have that idea or we're starting to think about the idea is these fears that I'm not good enough. I don't have the qualifications. I don't have a certification to be a health and wellness coach. I don't have a certification to be a an interior design service. I don't have the certification to be a coach if that you want to be a business coach yourself. The only people I've helped are my friends and family. By the way, these are the perfect audience to start with because they can give you those testimonials that will show the social proof you need to get the paying clients. Um, nobody's going to pay me for that. Maybe it's not the right time. I want you to take all of these fears, realize them, write them out and realize them, address them, so now we can rewrite them. And here are the truths. You are good enough just as you are right now. Maybe you don't have a ton of experience, but you have some kind of experience. You have the passion you drive, and that is enough for right now. You have to decide that this is what you want. You're going to know more tomorrow about your idea than you did today. As long as, again, you're taking that action, you're doing the research, you are reaching out to people, you're coming on things like this. As long as you're taking the action, you will always know more tomorrow than you did today. And if this is something that is aligned with your purpose and your passion, you're going to be able to step into that expert persona much faster than you think. Um, I, was, I knew nothing really about branding other than very basic stuff that we learned in college, right? In like a marketing class. And I knew nothing about business coaching before I actually really started doing it. But the more we do it, and because it was, I'm so passionate about the branding and about helping people realize their own passion and start their own business, it is so much easier for me to step into calling myself a branding expert and living out myself as a branding expert. Um, and when we show up as if and take the action to position yourself as an expert, people are going to feed off the energy and they're going to be gravitated into your space, aka pay you for your services. And the last truth I want to tell you is now is the absolute perfect time. If you're waiting for the stars to be aligned, if you're waiting for the quote unquote perfect time, if you're waiting for certain money to come into place, if you're wait, waiting for a green light from somebody else, your chances are you're never going to start. You are the only green light you need. You are the only person who needs to approve. As long as you have that idea and you realize that it's coming from that place of purpose and passion, now is the absolute best time. Next. Now we want to talk about the vision. So we really want to get clear about why are you starting this side hustle in the first place? What's the overall goal? Is that for extra monthly income? Is it because you're passionate about this? Is it because you want to do something more creative? 
Do you want to have a little more breathing room once a month? Are you saving for big life events like a house, a bigger car? Are you eventually going to have kids and you need, I don't know, you're saving up for college. I don't know. Anything. It could be literally anything. Um, big vacations, just you're getting married, anything. Uh, or are you eventually looking to replace your 95? These are all reasons. There's no right or wrong reason. I think when I first started, I definitely wanted to get out of my nine to five. So I wanted to replace that income, but I also wanted to do something more creative I to do something more in alignment with what I felt passionate about. And I wanted to be more creative in helping businesses start thrive through their particular branding. So that was when I say branding, that was like design work. Like I wanted to do logos and colors and all that kind of stuff. So that was my starting and that was my starting why. And now my vision to continue growing my business is to spread this message I'm kind of giving you today about doing things from a place of purpose and passion and alignment um, that are that puts no limits. Our career shouldn't put limits on our lives, but our lives should only, uh, what's the right word, like help us create this bigger vision and help us create that vision into reality. So also when we're thinking about this, think about where you want to be in three months, where you want to be in six months, where you want to be in one year and where you want to be in five years. But before you do that, what does your life look like in three months, six months, a year, and five years if you do not take that action? How do you feel? Are you embarrassed? Are you kicking yourself in the ass? Are you disappointed in yourself? What hasn't changed? Are you still stuck in that same job? Are you still living paycheck to paycheck? Do you feel still feel strapped by your finances? Do you still feel jealous when you're looking at other people who are doing the thing that you want to do? And then what becomes possible for you when you do take that action in starting? And I'm telling you, it doesn't have to, you just have to decide that you want it and take those little actions forward. And again, by you being here, it's a huge action step. But what is it? What's the possibility? What's the bigger vision three months from now, six months from now, one year from now, five years from now, and always hold on to this vision for inspiration and motivation and remind yourself of what you do not want <laughs> if you don't take, take the action. Okay, so now we're going to get into the foundation of really, truly building this side hustle. And there are a lot that goes into the foundation, but I think these are kind of the top things that I would like to see you guys address first. And that is your ideal clients, your services, developing your own brand, and positioning yourself as an expert. So when I say ideal clients, these are obviously the people that you want to work with through your services or who you are going to sell your products with. It is always important to carve out a very niche audience. It is um, crucial that we get really, really specific about this because when we are doing marketing and we are doing social media and we're doing email marketing, we know kind of what, where their head's at. We know where their headspace at. We know what their pain points are, their desires. So it makes that wording easier. It makes us target our targeting messaging that much easier. So we want to get really, really specific about this. So what you want to ask yourself is who are they? What are they struggling with right now? What are their pain points? Where are they, what are their desires? Where do they want to do? So the best way to kind of go about that, answering that question is what does their current day look like from start to end? What does their current day look like? How are they feeling when they get up in the morning? Are they absolutely dreading the commute to work? Are they dreading having that meeting with their boss? Are they dreading having to do the work for somebody else? Do they wish they could be traveling more? Do they wish they can? Are they searching on Pinterest, like top 10 places to travel in Europe? What is it that they're doing and what is it that they're missing? And be specific as possible for this because once you get to the services, once you've established all of this stuff with your ideal clients, it'll be easier to shape services around helping them make that transition. So if they are, if your ideal client, I'm just going to use a health coach example. If your ideal client is getting up every day and they feel really tired, they know they want to work out, but they're just not making the time to do it. They're not making the best healthy choices in terms of food. They're reaching for the chips rather than the blueberries. They're um, skipping the gym because they promise themselves that they're just going to take a half an hour nap but you know, the half an hour turns into three hours after work and then they're up late and then the whole cycle starts over and over and over again. So is that something that is happening with them right now, but they know they want to get to feeling more healthier. Maybe they're not even looking to lose it, maybe a little bit, but they just want to live a healthier lifestyle. So how can you help them make that transition? What kind of services did they need? What kind of programs do they need? What kind of help do they need from you in order to be able to make that transition? And why are your and how are your services or your products the perfect solution to be able to do that? And 
again, your services need to be able to walk them through this transition. It depends kind of how, we're gonna go into this a little bit more, how much you wanna be working with your clients one-on-one, -on -one, but are you just doing one-on-one -on -one calls with them? Are you doing workbooks with them? Are they getting one-on-one -on -one customer support with, support with you? Are you working with a group of clients at one, time, at one time? What kind of support, again, do they need from you in order to make that transition and transformation successfully? for long-term success, not just a one and done thing for a long-term success. So if you're a business coach or a branding coach, how can you shape your services to get them to start the business, but then also carry that over to running the business as well. So you of course wanna set them up for that success, but you wanna set them up for that long-term success inside your services. And I think it just goes back to asking yourself, what do they need? And if you pay attention to when you're answering these questions about your ideal client, a lot of the times you'll find that your ideal client represents a version of yourself. A lot of the times our ideal clients are just a few steps behind where we currently are. So I'm helping my main ideal clients that I work with are people who are either just starting their businesses or who are ready to start the business or to grow to that next level. So at one point I started the business. At one point I was ready to grow to that next level. So I can teach or I feel that I'm the perfect solution to their problems because of my own unique branding spin on things, but also because I've been through the process. You can literally handhold your clients through the process because you have been through their, their pain points and their desires. Also a point about services and things to think about is I always recommend having three tiers of services. And this goes to just kind of different forms of investment levels and to have options for your audience and for your potential clients. Um, if they have a few hundred dollars to invest, maybe that you're starting with a course. If they have a couple thousand and you want to do more of a one-on-one -on -one support, maybe that's a longer program. And after that, maybe there's an elite program. You could even have a very, very, very low offer for $37, $27. It's just good to have options and to have the option to constantly up level and upgrade clients who start at the very bottom with you. Okay, next thing we're gonna talk about is your brand. Um, there's a lot of misconception that your brand is just your colors, colors and just your logo, it's kind of the look, but it really is your complete DNA. It's your personality of your, your person and it's the, how you can bring that into your business. It creates the DNA, the voice of your, your business. It is best practices to show up authentically as you are, as yourself through your business. And what that does, it really just builds on that like, trust, and no factor. And what I mean by that is the more we show up as ourselves through our brand, whether that's social media, how we're writing out our emails, um, how we're showing up on these lives, if we are more of a t-shirt and jeans kind of person, if we're showing up wearing that t-shirt and jeans, if we really enjoy wearing sneakers on every day of the week or showing up wearing sneakers, if you love wearing heels every day of the week, you're showing up as that. It's how we can show that personality in the little things in our everyday lives that's going to resonate with certain people. So your ideal client may have very similar interests and very similar tastes as you. But anyway, the more we show up through ourselves and through our authentic selves, through our businesses, it builds upon the like, trust, and no factor. So they resonate and they like us for personality traits that we may share with them. We tr they trust us because now we've got them in our radar of being like them in some way. And when we're teaching our value and we're communicating our value and we're communicating our expertise, they're automatically trusting us. And then we become that known factor. We become that go-to person for this particular item that you're speaking on, whether that's health coach, branding coach, business coach, or if you, I don't know, anything, any kind of service-based business, if that's what you're talking about constantly, just mix it in with a little bit of the personality. And that's how you kind of really develop a well-rounded brand in addition to the physical elements. So that's your colors, your fonts, textures, patterns. Um, we definitely wanna be consistent with that. And marble is very big in my brand. It's all over my, my website, it's in my Instagram. So I always have a little bit of marble on these free events too. I think it's just, I don't know, it just resonates with me. It's just classy and just very, I am personally very drawn to the marble. I have a, a bunch of marble things. My iPad case is marble. All the things are marble. So, um, that is, you'll see that everywhere in my brand. So it's just good to be consistent with these things. And I have a list here of where you can find different um, items here. Obviously, you've left out colors, but it's colors.co is a good website to find a color palette for your business. And these are all free. Fonts to font.com is a good system to use. Designcanva.com, they have a free version and a paid for version. You can design your logo in there. 
they have some logo templates already made for you. And if you wanted to get a little bit more creative, you wanted a little bit more options, there are paid for versions of different things inside of Creative Market. They have some things that are already done. They've got some patterns and textures. They have some logos in there as well that you can kind of just insert your own business name. Um, design, a bigger design, if you are thinking about being a graphic designer or a doing some kind of branding studio and doing design work, I would recommend doing the Adobe Creative Suite and that's the InDesign, the, the, um, the Photoshops, all of that kind of stuff is just a little bit heftier and a little bit, there's a lot more options to for designers inside those programs. But I would say the essentials when we're thinking about our brand is I would definitely recommend having a logo and having something that is recognizable and resonates with an audience. Having some kind of set colors, I would recommend anywhere from three to five that you're gonna use over and over, but really work on developing your voice. So um, I have my mom edit some emails for me sometimes and she always, not yells at me, but she's always like, I don't understand why you're writing as if you're speaking. It's because that's just how I wanna communicate with my audience. I am very much, oh my God, did you watch last week's episode of, of the Kardashian, did you watch last week's episode of Grey's Anatomy? And I'm always like referencing to pop culture inside my emails. It's just, it's, yes, it's keeping it relevant, but it's more showing that personality and showing that I'm not business 24 seven. I do have a free free time. I do have a life where I'm doing things outside. And again, it's just kind of building that like trust and no factor. If you can resonate on something personal, like a TV show, you can just kind of open those lines of communication a little bit more. And the other thing I would recommend is having somewhere for your audience to go to find out more about what you do and how you can help them. So whether you're referring to people to your Instagram and you have some highlights explaining what it is that you do as a brand coach, what it is you do as a health coach, what it is you do as a business owner in general, whatever business or side hustle you do, I would recommend having a place where they can read more about you. I would always recommend having a website, but you don't necessarily need a website right away to start. There's other ways around this. I would just decide and have some place where they can learn more about you. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the process and that's kind of the launching, the building your audience and community, running the business and consistency. So these are really kind of next steps after you take the time to lay that solid foundation, that solid groundwork. This is hit the ground running, let's do this kind of thing. Okay. First and foremost, nobody is going to know they can buy from you if we don't tell them that we are open for business. So we need to spread the word. I would pick a social media platform, whether that's Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, whatever it is that you choose to focus on, I would do maybe one to two to start with. Get up there, start building an audience even before you're ready to launch and just slowly start announcing what it is that you're doing. You can have a particular launch day where you say, hey, I'm now officially open for business. But I think the more we kind of drip release content and, and tease our audience a little bit and start following other people who we believe would be kind of in our wheelhouse and in our audience or maybe our ideal clients, the more I think that gets to be exciting of, oh my gosh, I'm officially open for business. So get on social media, let your audience know you've been up to, and you, again, you can start to support your launch date, invite people to take a look at your website if you have one, or tell them where they can find more information. So if you do stories explaining what it is that you're doing, save those as a highlight. So everybody new who comes to your profile and wants to know more about what you do, you have a highlight that says what I do, or work with me, or more about manifestation, or more about um, mindset coaching, whatever it is that you are doing, you want to make sure that people can find out more so they know that you're open for business. Again, nobody can pay you if they don't know you're open for business. So that's kind of a launch plan, a very loose launch plan, but a couple other things I would suggest is having some kind of freebie. And that's, that could mean Yes, they can come to your Instagram or your website and learn more about what you do, but you want to give them that next level of value. You want to give them that kind of one-on-one -on -one support without necessarily giving them one-on-one -on -one support. So maybe if you are a spirituality coach, maybe you have, a lot of people don't know what that is or how it can help them. So maybe you have some kind of downloadable PDF workbook that they can work through to uncover what it is spirituality means to them how they can incorporate into their life, into the business, and what results that they can get. So it's a little mini taste of the transformation that you can provide in your bigger services. Okay, so building your audience community. I, I talked about this a little bit, but the point of 
that freebie is yes, to share value, to share value and to give a little taste of what it is that you do. But you also are going to do this to list build. And what I mean by list builds is you're going to be starting an email list. And there's a lot of services that you can use to do this. There's MailChimp is one I usually recommend when we're first starting out. Um, there's ConvertKit, there's ActiveCampaign, there's a whole bunch. I would do some research on which one would be best for your needs long term. Um, I know there's like prices go up every time you hit like a certain amount of uh, people on a list. So just do some research about which system and operating system would work best for you. A lot of them allow you to make landing pages, which is basically like one pages of websites. So you could also get use those to start if you don't want to um, build a website right away. So again, this helps you take the stance as the expert in your field. And once again, builds on that like, trust, and no factor. You're sharing something of immense value, but you're also adding people into your, what we're going to call a warm market. So these people who download your freebie or who download your PDF, your workbook, whatever it is that you're teaching on, they are, could probably potentially be complete strangers who came across this on your Instagram because you started following them, they followed you back and the cycle just continues, but now they are not complete strangers. What you're going to do is you're going to nurture, nurture that relationship. You're going to reach out to them and just have a casual conversation for that, with them. Maybe you invite them on a call. Maybe one of the things that you're teaching is how to jumpstart your workouts. You're gonna reach out to them and say, hey, if you ever need any further help or wanna pick my brain, I would love to give you some more advice about this or I enjoy helping people with this transformation. I know what it's like to be to feel like you can't get over that hurdle. So if there's ever a time where you want to get on the phone with me, talk more about this, let's do that. You're really, 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 really want to make sure you're nurturing these relationships. This is a forever practice. This is something I still do today. Honestly, every time I get a new follower, most of the time I am going in there and at least once a week, cause I get, you know, followers here and there, but at least once a week, I'm going in there, looking at the profile, maybe liking a photo, maybe reacting to a story or just saying, Hey, or thank you for signing up for this, or thank you for downloading my freebie. It's just, how can you go that extra mile to make that cold lead a now a warm lead? It doesn't mean you're selling to them right away. It doesn't mean you're selling to them next week, but how can you nurture that relationship to let them know that you're here for them and you're positioning yourself as the expert. Okay, so now to go to running the business. And what I mean by this is like finding the clients and doing the dang thing. We want to create systems, strategies, offers, and value that they need to hear. So how can we help them envision what it's like to work with you? But how can we help envision, help them envision that transformation? So maybe that's you're giving them opportunities to connect with you through your own kind of free event through your own kind of free freebie and PDF. I'm just big on PDFs in the beginning because I think they're, they're pretty simple to build and people love workbooks. <laughs> people love creative workbooks. Um, and it also is a creative outlet for you guys, but how can you make it possible for them to start envisioning that transformation for themselves? So is that through a Facebook post? Is that through a social media post? Is that through an email sequence? Is that through you reaching out to them. Don't be afraid to ask for the sale, but there is a way to do this. This doesn't feel icky. I, thinking about my first clients, I definitely found my first kind of wave of clients through doing reach out on my own through a mix of, of Instagram, but also Facebook groups. I haven't, to be honest, I haven't been in Facebook groups for a while now. So I'm not sure about rules and regulations and all that kind of stuff, but I used to invite people into my freebie, but also invite people on calls to say, Hey, I can help you with your branding transformation. I can help you with your website. Just kind of, again, kind of nurturing these leads a little bit, not necessarily selling right away. You want to definitely find that personal connection. So if you're getting on a cold call with somebody before I'm like, Hey, what do you do? I want to build your website for you. It's, Hey, where are you from? What do you do? Oh, I started out in this. That's so funny. Oh, you know, this person. Oh, I love that show. It's just how can you connect with them first before you're turning on that sale? We want to sales doesn't need to be icky, but it can be a dance a little bit. We don't want to leap right in. I find it so annoying when we get those random DMS from people who are like, Hey, I'd love to tell you about my brand new blah, blah, blah. And they don't even use your first name. Like it just, there's a way to do it and don't do it. You have more questions about sales. Let me know about that. But the best part about it is, and the best part about you kind of doing this research is, and nurturing relationships is 
you can turn that into inviting them to work with you if you see it as a good fit. So if you get on the phone with somebody and you're like, mm, yeah, no, I don't like how they're, I don't like where they're coming from. I don't like their personality. I don't think we vibe well together. You can just cut it off as a free call. You can just cut it off as we're not a good fit. You don't have to invite them in. You get to decide who you do and don't want to work with, which is great. Okay, so the best or the next thing is consistency. Consistency is the growth. Consistency is how you see that next level. No matter what quote unquote level you are at in business or your side hustle, you need to be consistent. So you need to show up consistently for your audience. Maybe right now you're just focusing on Facebook posts and social media posts, maybe or um, Instagram posts, posts, maybe doing some stories, but eventually you'll want to add in some blog posts here and there, more free free offers, free calls, free webinars, IGTV series, always be thinking about what that next level thing is that shows your own growth, welcomes in more growth, and continues showing your expertise. So at first, like today in my business now, I've got blog posts going, I do IGTV series sometimes, um, I do these kinds of events, I'm putting on a freebie every couple of months, but when I first started, it was just, I just need to get on a routine of sharing my freebie over and over, getting some calls there, landing clients there, and then I could kind of move into the next phase, quote unquote. So remind people all the time what it is that you're doing. Remind people all the time that you're open for business. I forget the exact um, number, but I have this thing here. People need to hear things 22 times before making a decision to opt in and that goes for something free or paid offer. So even with this webinar, you heard me talk about it not 22 times, but you heard me talk about it a lot, or you saw me post on stories a lot. I'm talking about it in other platforms too. I'm talking about it in my Facebook group. I'm talking about it on my social media, on my Instagram. I'm talking about it in Facebook groups. I didn't do Facebook groups this time. I'm talking about it on my blog and I'm, I'm putting that on, on Pinterest to see if that universe will, will give me a couple of items here and there. It's like how you need to constantly, constantly, constantly showing up and when it looks like it's not working, that's when you need to show up even more. We don't want to get scared by having less items than we want or not getting the results that we want. That's when we need to push a little bit more and that's when we need to be even more consistent and show even more value and show even more of how much of an expert and how much we love sharing and how passionate we are about this information. So a lot of the times when people do kind of like a sales campaign, they'll see 80% of their sales come in that absolute last day. People like to push it out. People like to push their boundaries. They like to push their luck a little bit. So don't give up on being inconsistent if on the first three days of doing a sale or the first three, three days of doing a promotion, you don't see the results that you want. They're going to come through. You have to hold that belief and you have to be consistent in showing up. Okay, so next steps. Where do you go from here? You've laid the foundation and you kind of have kind of work walked through a little bit of the process of building that of where you can find the clients of how you kind of go about the sales without feeling icky you want to make sure you're nurturing those personal relationships a reminder a vision plus action equals results so what action are you taking today remind yourself of this bigger vision remind yourself of what you don't want to happen if you're not taking action where are you in this process right now do you already have the idea have you already launched are you ready for the next phase are you right about ready to, to launch? Are you looking for more automations and contract help? Are you, what, where are you in this process of building and growing the business and what needs to happen in order for your next level of the vision to become a reality? And do you need more support? Are you feeling like this is just scratching the surface? What is happening next for you in order for you to get to that next level of your vision? I want you to know that you don't have to do this alone. I'm now going to invite you to go deeper with this information. I want to invite you to join me inside that next level of your side hustle, but also for your life. Maybe you want to take this through, maybe you don't want to take this to full time, but you really are just looking to grow that side hustle enough so that you've got that extra wiggle room. You can buy the sports things for your kids. You can save for that house. You can save for that car. You want that breathing room. You want to travel more. You actually like your job, but you want to go for the five-star hotels instead of the three-star hotels. I get it. I've been there. But maybe you are looking to completely re replace your oh, a fuzz. <laughs> to re completely replace your nine to five and take this on full time. I'm inviting you to join me in creating that next level for your side hustle, for your life and beyond. So I have for the first time ever an official course bundle. So what that is is my official Lane Foundation course, which goes exactly 
through all of the things and the terms and all of the things you need to build the foundation, lay the foundation for that long-term success, but it also includes the Growth Essentials course. And that is my brand new course, it is the exact course you need to run and grow the online business. So let me go into a little bit more details on that. Laying the Foundation course helps you get clear on that bigger vision for yourself. So we kind of touched on that here. It's uncovering the true meaning as to why you're starting the business. We're going to really, really, really dive deep into that and make sure you have that strong connection. And again, it just kind of makes it easier to show up on those tough days, draw inspiration, draw motivation from that why. You're going to get crystal clear on who your ideal client is. You're going to paint the exact picture of who this are so that you can write a brand story that resonates. We're going to, I'm going to teach you exactly how to design your brand elements, create your logo, choose your colors, um, pick patterns and textures. There's a bunch of psychology that goes into this. And I'm going to teach you exactly how to do this. So again, you're resonating with an audience without even realizing that you're doing it. You're going to create a brand experience that sets you apart from others in your, in your industry. If you do want to be a branding coach, if you do want to be a business coach, health coach, or do you want to have some kind of product-based business, chances are you're not the only one doing it. But your brand is kind of what sets you apart. And we're going to teach you how to set yourself apart through your brand. And we're going to teach you how to set yourself up for success to bring in the income that you actually desire. So this is an eight modules plus two bonus modules. There's a module in there. We're going to go into that in the next slide. But this, you get lifetime unlimited access plus updates I make. I've already made updates to the Laying the Foundations course. And this is delivered in workbooks, video modules, case studies, audio files, all a different mix of, I know there's a bunch of different learners, types of learners out there. So I wanted to make sure I hit on every single type. So these are the, this is the outline of the modules. Module one is that bigger vision. Module two is branding. What is branding anyway? Really getting to the bottom of what that is, what that can look like, why it is so important to your business. Module three is establishing your why, again, creating that deeper connection. Module four is writing the brand story that resonates. Module five, is all about the vibes. This is probably my favorite module. It really sets you up to create a visual of what you want your audience to feel when they are experiencing your brand, whether that's through a free service or a paid for service. Module six, we're really going to establish those ideal clients. You're going to write, write out an avatar. And again, this makes your marketing efforts that much easier. Module seven, we're getting physical. This is how we walk you through. This is where we walk you through the design of making your logo, primary logo, and alternative logo, what that even means. And I promise, 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 it is not as hard as you think. Module eight, we're going into the brand experience and how you can show up authentically through all of your services from start to finish. And there's two bonus modules here, building the on-brand website. And number two is, so you want to be an influencer, and that talks a lot about social media. But the Growth Essentials course is the next step in that business building process. So this is a little bit more strategy driven. There is going to be a module about mindset and self-care and I'll get into that in a minute. But this one is more about the launch plan of start to finish launch plan, a sales plan that works for you, a growth plan that works for you. So module one, we're going to get into self-care mindset. And this, I would have never even thought that was a thing for me, but it was, it is now an essential part of my business. I was very against it in the beginning when I first started working with business coach, um, just because I wanted that strategy. I wanted to get to that next level sooner rather than later, but it was an essential, essential, essential part of my success that I have today. And I don't go a day without doing some kind of mindset and self-care practices, but I promise this is a totally introductory module of it. It is just a kind of basics of setting yourself up for that long-term success, but making sure we're taking care of ourselves and we're not burning ourselves out. Module two is getting into the in-depth launch plan from start to finish. If you've already launched your business, that's fine. You're going to find benefits in the rest of this. But this is if you haven't launched yet, you were start to finish the, the month prior, the week prior, the days leading up, the days after, and how you should go about them, best practices for that. Module three is do I need a website? But we're also going to be covering some other essentials that you do need inside your business in order to start. So you get a client, this is what you need to have. Module four is creating and building the email list. So we're going to go into how to create your freebie, where you should be hosting this, where you should be following up with your clients, what kind of emails you should have in a follow-up sequence, all of the things that you need to continue building your email list, um, why it is so important, and how just kind of best practices of where you could be reaching out to people to get people on your email list. Module five, I'm going to teach you how to host your own free, free webinar or some kind of live training or 
free challenge of some sort. I think it, there's a certain power in showing up live for an audience. So we're going to go over all of that. In module six, we're going to get to the nitty gritty of the sales. We're going to talk all about my sales process, best practices, things that I've done that haven't worked and things that I do that do work and taking the scary out of the sales. I promise you'll never forget your first sales call but it doesn't need to be a scary one, I promise. Module seven, we're going into contracts and automation. So obviously I'm in the US, so I'll just be talking about, um, I won't really be going into specifics of contracts to use, but I'm going to be talking about what you do and don't need a contract for, and just kind of different automations that you can have to strategize and organize your business. So that's, okay, you book a client, what happens next? What systems they need to go into? How are you landing? How are you structuring your services? so that they can kind of go through a funnel here. Module eight, we're going to talk again about using social media the right way, but now this, you're at a different phase in your business. So how can you use social media to continue growing your audience, to continue growing your community, and to get your brand and your business to that next level? And that goes into the bonus module of elevating your brand. So this is kind of outside of social media, what you can be doing for that. I'm really excited about this course and this course bundle. Each, each course individually is $4.97. So normally the bundle price would be $9.94, but your price today for showing up and taking the action is $6.27. You're basically getting two for free, or two for the price of one rather. And there's some early bird action bonuses going on. You'll get a one 30 minute onboarding call with me. You're welcome. <laughs> Messaging coaching support for me for two whole weeks. My mini money mindset course, which is a mini course, three modules of just kind of what it's like to address a money story that you have. Maybe you have some fears about money. Maybe you have some hesitations about money or you want to improve your relationship with money in general. Money can be a tricky relationship to have. And that was something that I've experienced in the past. I did a lot of work around this. So I, and I know a lot of my clients, a lot of my audience members also are not struggling with it, but it's something that they always want to be approving about. So you'll get access to that. There are payment plans available for if you want to do the individual or you want to do the bundle. And this expires in 48 hours. But whatever you choose to do, I just want to remember and remind you that vision plus action equals results. I remember where you want to be in three months, six months, a year, and five years from now. And remember where you don't want to be. Do something today that you can thank yourself for later. If you are interested in the course or have additional questions, hit me up in the Instagram DMs, Nova Strategics, and you can go right into the link in my bio and the bundle is there as well as the individual courses. If you have taken my courses before, message me and I can give you an exclusive um, members discount. I don't think I set that up yet, but that just reminded me. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for being here today. If you take anything away from this, please, please, please do something today that you can thank yourself for later, tomorrow, next year, five years. Don't let yourself five years from now still be thinking, I wish I had started that thing. Do it today. Start today. <laughs> okay, guys, thanks so much for showing up, and I will talk to you all soon.